without further ado, uh, Richard Sands. First of all, I, I really have to uh, thank uh, Mike and uh, Werner because the reason that this team has been so successful is because we always made sure that they were incentivized to create fundamental shareholder value as opposed to uh, being incentivized by the agency uh, power of their position. So. Um, they came to the right conclusions that way, <laughs> as opposed to the wrong conclusions. And you can see that in the stock price. So we're very proud of uh, what everybody at Constellation um, has done. So, you know, uh, I think we're running a little bit late. And uh, you've heard a lot about uh, Mike uh, and Werner. And so I'm not going to go through their resumes. They gave me two pages worth of items. <laughs> okay, uh, we are very, very fortunate to have such esteemed uh, people here today, and I believe that all of us will learn a lot if I be quiet, if I shut up, and let them talk. So, thank you for coming back, Mike, and thank you. Uh, for being here, um, and we look forward to what you both have to say. Great, thanks. Okay. We're honored to be here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go out here. It's going to be difficult for me to find a place. So, we're going to be talking about this course, Being a Leader and the effective exercise of leadership, an ontological phenomenological model. And I'm going to warn you right now that there's a whole bunch of the language that we're going to be using that you're going to find weird. And you would like us, because it will be in your mind, you would like us to stop using those weird terms. But if you want to accomplish what we've accomplished, you have to create a different conversational domain. It's like some of you will be going through this. It's like going to take a mathematics course and telling the professor, I don't want you talking about things like derivatives and, and that kind of stuff in integrals. And the, I'm going to be not at all shy. We have actually created a miracle. And it was all due to Mark, who gave us the opportunity, he gave us a five-year grant of um, what we created was a leadership laboratory in which we could experiment with new ways of dealing with teaching and communication. That was in a conversation shortly after you took the deanship. You're, you, you remember better than I, but uh, <clears throat> both of us had been exposed to some ontological material, and I know for most of you in this room that doesn't make any sense, and we were very interested in its power and very interested as to how we could get it into the educational establishment. And um, out of that meeting in your conference room that day came the idea that we would create a course and, uh, and we would use this material to teach something. Now what were we going to teach? We decided we were going to teach leadership. Why? Because nobody can be against leadership. <laughs> and. Uh, and that turned out to be actually a profound, profoundly good judgment. So <clears throat> I asked you to bear with us because you're going to hear funny language, like when you got into your first mathematics course or your first whatever weird course. It's like, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, let's get on with what we're doing. We're going to run late because Werner and I prepared an hour and a half talk, probably an hour and 45 minutes. But he's promised to be on time. I never fulfill my promises. <laughs> You'll find out about integrity. So, <clears throat> so first of all, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. What we're going to do is actually read these slides to you. Now, for a while, you're going to be ticked off about that. Uh, it turns out to be an enormously important element in the success of this course, and you'll see uh, from the slides, how it's succeeding around the world. 
Um, and <clears throat> we were challenged with the idea that the challenge we were facing was how are we going to transfer this technology to scholars around the world to teach it in their own universities without spending a year or two with them, because that's impossible. And Werner came up with this crazy idea that we would literally create a textbook in PowerPoint slides and read the uh, rigorously written sentences and paragraphs, and we will read the slides to the participants in the course word for word with discussion and interruption and all of that kind of stuff. And I told him that was crazy. That absolutely wasn't going to work. We were going to get thrown out on our ear. And uh, there was a big argument at that time. I hoped it would work. We finally settled on, I said, the course started on Monday, and I said, I'll give us all until Tuesday noon. And if the students are in a riot on, by Tuesday noon, we're going to have to stop and go back to the old way and figure out how we're going to transfer this to other people to teach it um, in a different way. By the, by the time Tuesday occurred, Tuesday noon occurred, the students were mostly in love with what was going on. So you're going to get a taste of that. Now, nobody believes that. We didn't have enough time to give you the data that we've collected on that, but I just take my word for it. It's been remarkably powerful. So this is a one semester academic course uh, that we created that takes the makes the following outrageous promise to the participants taking the course, if I can get this to work. You will leave this one semester course being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as your natural self-expression. Now, that's an insane promise. And underneath this is something that's profoundly important. Underneath this is a deep tension between what I always thought education and lecturing and these kinds of things was all about, which was me transferring knowledge to the participants, to the students. We do some of that in the course, but the entire course is designed to do something very different. We don't want to leave the students knowing. We want to leave the students being leaders and exercising leadership effectively as their natural self-expression. Now, the first time I had heard the term being used in that way, I was really puzzled, and I can see that I'm not the only one that was that way. But <clears throat> let me see. we have a shorthand way of summarizing it. An epistemological mastery leaves one knowing. An ontological mastery, ontology is all about the philosophy and science of being, an ontological mastery leaves one being, as in being a leader or being a person of integrity and all of those kinds of things. So we spend an enormous time on an illustration of the fact that there's a big difference between knowing and being. At the Harvard Business School, we spend an enormous amount of effort on ethics courses and all that kind of stuff. We fail miserably. How do we know that? Just look at the number of Har Harvard MBAs that are going to jail each year. <laughs> and we're not proud of that. There's a profound difference between being and knowing. And the, at some level, the secret for what we do, it all comes out of the new conversational domain that we've created, and you're going to get a little taste of that today. We do the course in six, in six days, because we, at, at various places in the world, um, but um, it's best taught over one semester. So, <clears throat> so we and our colleagues, Steve Zafron, Kerry Granger, and Joe DiMaggio, and our newest member, Jerry Echeverria, spent the last 11 years creating this course. The first five years was when, as I said, Dean Zupan of the Simon School of Business at the U of R courageously provided us with a classroom laboratory within which to do the research and development required to create a course that would actually leave students being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as their natural self-expression. Dan Struble 
who I think is still here, uh, I didn't have a chance to meet him when I got in today, was very critical in giving us support. And much of that teaching actually took place in this room, interestingly enough. So <clears throat> during the first five years that we taught the course at the Simon School, it was conducted variously from three to five full days. During the orientation period at the beginning of the school year to students and some faculty and administrators from the university at large. <clears throat> Enrollments range from about 20 in the beginning to 120 in the last year. Since then, some material from the course has been taught here at the Simon School by Dan Struble, Candy O'Byrne, and Bob Madama. I'm, I'm sorry, this thing seems to be a little sticky. What's currently happening with the course? The course or the course with variations or parts of the course is already being taught by local professors in more than 10 universities around the world, from the United States Air Force Academy to Rutgers University to the medical school at Dartmouth College. As a part of our ongoing research and development of the course and, in, and to introduce it into new universities, we personally need to deliver the course twice a year. When we teach the course, instead of doing it over a semester, we do the course in six very full days, with two days off in the middle where the participants deal with personal and small group assignments from the course. We open up the courses we personally teach to non-university people so that we can research its impact, not only on students and professors, but also on managers, executives, and other people with a commitment to leadership. And by the way, I encourage you uh, to raise your hand, ask questions, issue challenges, uh, whatever is on your mind, and if my back happens to be to you, just say, Mike, and then I'll turn around and decide whether I want to call on you. <laughs> so, uh, so when we deliver the course in academic institutions, most of the participants are students, ranging from undergraduates through MBA and master's students to PhD candidates, along with professors, administrators, and alumni from that institution, as well as professors and administrators from other academic institutions. When as a result of taking the course as a participant, a professor chooses to, be, to personally teach the course, each year we conduct a creating, leader, <coughs> creating course leaders workshop to do the following, to train those professors committed to teaching the course to discover for themselves the content of the course. Two, to powerfully deliver the content of the course. Three, to effectively handle participants' questions and challenges. Four, and in what it takes personally to actually deliver on the promise of the course. During the two Creating Course Leader workshops we've conducted so far, there have been 68 academics trained to teach the course in their own institutions. <clears throat> Graduates of, the, of that course have formed their own organization, LACOL, which stands for Learning, Learning Community for Ontological Phenomenological Leadership and Education. There are 45 active faculty members from 43 different universities and colleges around the world who are members of LACOL. And when I get back to Florida, we're having a meeting of, with LaCole in Sarasota this weekend. <clears throat> so we've also taught the course to and trained to deliver the course over 200 consultants from more than 60 firms who now offer the course to their clients. The course really has a big impact on the world. And it has that impact through the impact we have on our students and that the people we've trained to teach the course has on their students. <clears throat> this commitment includes that wherever the full course is taught as designed, it delivers on the following promise to participants. <clears throat> if I can get the change. You will leave this course being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as your natural self-expression. That contrasts with leaving you leaving the course with information and knowledge that you have to resurrect and figure out how to apply in any given situation. We guarantee to our students that if they do what we ask them to do, when you walk out the door, you're going to find yourself doing things you never did before and you didn't even think about them. And they were very effective. That's what we mean by natural self-expression, a natural response to the situation that's in front of you. Now that's a miracle to actually be able to do that. And this isn't restricted, this teaching methodology is not restricted 
to teaching leadership and creating leaders. It can be used in lots of different places. And that's my real agenda in, before I die, is to get this all over in all kinds of topics. Please. Is, uh, as a metaphor, if we watch athletes who perform at a high level, they're obviously not figuring out what to do. They're not remembering something. What they're doing is, has become for them a natural self-expression. And that's really what we mean. It's a good metaphor for what we mean here by natural self-expression. Where, where, where would you desire to apply it? I'd like you to apply it to my golf game. <laughs> <laughs>